I opened my emails the other day and saw a pretty shocking subject line. 70% of properties across the GTA are selling below the asking price. Does that mean offer nights are dead? Should you stop that strategy as a seller? I'm going to dive into more of that in today's video. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Rob Marsiglio, sales representative with Kelly Williams Referred Urban Realty. Back with another video this week. And as I said, we're going to dive into a shocking headline, a shocking subject line of an email that I received. And here is said subject line. Now, I'm not going to out who sent this email. They do some solid work in the real estate space. But here's the headline. 70% of homes are selling below list price. Then a little bit further down in the body of the email, selling for less. 7 out of 10 GTA homes going for below asking. Now, before we dive into things, I can already hear people complaining, you know, Rob, the asking price means nothing. Who cares how many homes are selling above or below asking? And I totally agree with you. Marketing a property is sold above asking is a very disingenuous strategy. In my opinion, you could very well just say, you know, I listed this property for below market value and it's sold for market value. Bottom line, whatever a property sells for is more often than not what the market is willing to pay for that property. However, I do feel like the uh, percentage of homes selling for above asking can give you some insights and uh, maybe a little indications as to how a particular market segment, a particular area of the city is functioning. You know, if we're seeing this percentage climb high, a lot of homes selling over asking, chances are as a buyer, when you're looking at a, a list price that's maybe too good to be true, it's because they're attempting that strategy because it is working in that area because you know, sellers are happy with the results that they are receiving on offer nights with the offers that they're receiving on offer nights. So they are selling. If on the other hand, we're seeing a area of the city where maybe, you know, you're not seeing property selling for over asking, it could be an indication that list prices are, you know, truer to maybe the seller's expectations, maybe a little bit higher and buyers are able to negotiate down off that uh, list price a little bit. And maybe as a seller, it's not a great market to attempt the offer night strategy. And I do think that there's some info that can be gleaned from both the buying and the selling side. So I want to make it very clear that I'm not saying these pockets that are exhibiting signs of, you know, a high percentage of property selling for over listing are hot by any stretch or that prices are ripping, just that this strategy may be more effective in these markets than others. Start off with this post that I shared on X and Twitter. I also shared it on Blue Sky and threads. So if you are migrating away from Twitter for any reason whatsoever to these other platforms, I will be sharing all my content over there as well. But here you go. This kind of just shows you the percentage of home selling for 100% of list price or more per Toronto MLS. And this is right across the GTA uh, freeholds in black and condos are the red line. You can see that really at the peak of the market, we are seeing uh, condos and freehold properties, you know, close to 90% of them uh, in late 2021, early 2022, were selling for 100% of list price or more. Now this did coincide with big price jumps. You know, that prices went really crazy. This was the big last ascent to the peak that we saw before the big fall off in sales activity and before the big fall off in prices as well in early 2022. Rate hike started and you can see that fewer and fewer homes really sold for over asking price, meaning in my opinion that that list low holdback offer strategy was not working. Maybe people were getting offers, but they just weren't offers that sellers were willing to accept. So properties uh, less and less frequently were selling for above or at asking. That's kind of through late 2022. You can see the seasonality of the strategy working though. In the spring market, things peaked again, even in 2023. Same thing that happened in 2024 before it really tapered off. Now, just to highlight where we're at in November so far, this is through 13 days, 35% of freehold properties are selling at or above the asking price. That's compared to 30% last November. And on the condo side of things, it's pretty even to what we saw last November, uh, you know, right around 23.5% of condos selling at or above the list price. That's broad market and kind of backs up the claim that was made in that email that 70% of homes are selling below the asking price. Again, how they're trying to frame it is maybe it's a good time for buyers. I'm not so convinced on that, but what I do want to dive into now is breaking these numbers down by market segment, uh, by region first, and then I even took it one step further and broke each region down by municipality or by kind of market area in the city of Toronto. So stick with me through the rest of the video. We'll try and get through these pretty quickly. If you enjoy these deep dives into the numbers and the things that I am putting out today, consider subscribing to the channel, maybe liking this video, sharing with a friend who is interested in GTA real estate, whether that's to buy, rent, 
or just for entertainment purposes. Any subscription and like helps me reach more people just like you. So here we go, not a line chart this time. And what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the kind of October 1st to November 13th. So beginning of October to middle of November. And you can see uh, Durham Freeholds and Toronto Freehold properties are the two areas where we're seeing the highest percentage of property selling at or above the asking price. Both of those have uh, gone up over 40%. Now I shared my thoughts on these findings. I didn't see this as too surprising and I shared it on Twitter as to why. People are flocking to the most affordable areas. That's where the strategy seems to work best historically. You know, the Durham freehold market, people looking to get into a proper freehold home in Durham region, it's the most affordable. It also comes down to desirability of location, which is Toronto and people want those freehold properties in the city of Toronto. I'll break it down even further to show you where in Toronto it is happening most frequently. Share in the comments right now where you think that is. But uh, back to the chart, in the 30% range, we have uh, Durham condos and York freehold properties. You can see that really across the board, uh, bringing up the rear, less than 25% of condos in Peel, Toronto, York, and Halton are selling at or above the asking price. Now, as promised, that's the kind of big bird's eye view of all these markets. Let's dive into each market segment specifically to look at kind of where the most homes are selling at or above the asking price. Now, here's the answer to that question I just asked moments ago. Where in Toronto do we see the highest percentage of properties selling for or more than the list price. It is in the East End. East End, Beast End, you know, it's closest to Durham, so it does make sense where I'm in, you know. But uh, anyways, freehold properties are the black bars here. You can see over 50% of freehold properties in the East End are selling at or above asking, close to 40% in the West End. Then when you get Central, uh, this includes like your North York, um, Rosedale, some like higher end neighborhoods where you're not really looking at uh, holding back offers too, too much. Uh, it's about a third of those properties. On the condo side, however, right across the board, uh, again, it's the follows the same pattern, east end the most, west, and then central. Um, you are seeing, you know, about one in five properties selling for over asking centrally, one in four in the west end, and then not quite one in three, but uh, three in 10 in the east end selling at or above the asking price. So if we're putting this into practice, and again, we're still pretty broad looking at the entire East End, but if you wanted to try an offer night in Toronto right now, if you had a like kind of well-priced, attractive price East End property on the freehold side, that might be a product type where this strategy, uh, I'm not saying it's yielding mind-blowing results, but uh, it's, it seems to be yielding results that at least sellers are happy with considering half of properties are selling at or above the asking price. All right, now let's work our way across the rest of the GTA. I think we're going to go east to west here, starting with Durham region. So again, this is all property types. If there's a significant condo market in an area, I tried to highlight that. You'll see that in York region and in Peel region, I highlighted a couple condo markets. But here it's all property types for Durham. So in Ajax, you know, almost half of properties are selling at or above the asking price. And that gets down, it's a pretty tight spread between 40% in Whitby up to about 44% in Oshawa. So... If you're looking for a home in Durham region, again, more so at that lower price point, that entry level price point for a property, even up to uh, maybe that move up buyer, this strategy seems to be yielding results that are somewhat satisfactory to sellers right now. Jumping over to York, we have more markets here and, and you'll see at the bottom, uh, I've, I've noted C or F if I have a condo or a freehold market. I gotta ask, what is going on in Markham right now? 46% uh, of freehold properties in Markham are selling at above that asking price and 33% of the condo market is selling at or above that asking price. Then we work our way through Vaughn at 30%, Richmond Hill at 28%, New Market as a whole at 26%, Aurora at 26%, Georgina at 23%, EG is East Goulenberry at 21%, then we have Stovall at 17% and Vaughn at 13.8%. So say what you will about the strategy or what these numbers really show, but again, even in Stovall at the peak of the market, you're seeing almost everything selling at or above asking in these offer night situations. That's down to less than one in five properties selling for at or over asking. Jumping over to Peel region, uh, we have Brampton, 31% uh, of properties are selling at or above asking. The Mississauga freehold market is about 28% of properties. On the condo side, it's about 24% of properties in Mississauga. And in Caledon, so that's going to be like your Bolton and then Caledon proper. Uh, it's less than 14% of properties selling for at or above asking. And again, that Caledon number is a far cry from what we saw at the peak. Just like everywhere is a far cry from what we saw at the peak. But again, 
I do think there's something to be gleaned from this number. We'll wrap things up very quickly with Halton region where we're seeing Milton, about 34% of property selling at or above asking, 26% uh, in Burlington, 23% in Halton Hills. And then the Oakville freehold and condo markets I split up, you know, it's just shy of 22% in Oakville selling at or above asking. And on the condo market in Oakville, this is based on about uh, 85 sales, if I remember correctly, going back to the beginning of October, only 12.2% of those sold for at or above asking. So that's all the charts that I have for you. That's all the numbers. I thought that was kind of interesting. I hope that uh, you get something useful out of this. Let me know in the comments below though, what do you think of this sold at or above asking price number? I'm not asking about the spread between sold over asking because again, like I said, I think that's completely useless, but I do believe that you can maybe tell a little bit about the pace of a market or the interest in a segment of the market using this number, but I wanna hear what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for sticking with me through to the end of another video. And until we speak again next time, please stay safe and cheers.